Greetings, everybody. How are you today? It's been a little while since I've done one of these broadcasts, and I'm excited to be getting back to it. I am going to see if I can actually load up Facebook so I can check out comments as we go along. So if anybody has questions or wants to chime in, they can. Oh, that's interesting. I think uh, my printer just... Well... I thought today, since I've been playing around with this quite a bit, it's been a while since I've done one of these broadcasts. Oh, there it goes. Um, and the most interesting thing, I think, uh, from a technology education standpoint uh, from the last several weeks is that I finally uh, broke down uh, in November and plunked down the money for a 3D printer, and it arrived a couple of weeks ago. Um, I've been thinking about it for quite a while and kind of held off primarily because... Honestly, I wasn't exactly sure what I was going to be doing with it, and I didn't um, really want to just buy it and do nothing more than download Lego models or Star Wars models off of uh, Thingiverse and print them out. If I didn't really have kind of a vision for what I was going to be doing with it, I didn't really want to waste the money. And I was finally at the point where I was looking around the house and realizing all these different places where I needed something, and I wasn't exactly sure what... Um, but I started to kind of have that vision. I started seeing things just a little bit differently and decided, you know what, this is time. It's time to, uh, to dive in. So I wound up getting, and let me just show you what it is printing right now. You can probably hear it in the background. No, that's not what I want to do. I want to do that one. A, uh, Prusa i3 MK2. Um, I thought about getting it as a kit and saving a few hundred dollars, uh, but ultimately decided uh, to just buy it all put together. Um, from what I'd read, uh, a lot of times there's a lot of tinkering and calibration and little things that could go wrong with it and lots of reasons why it won't do what you want it to do. And I, what I really want to do is right out of the box be able to have a good experience with it, uh, to have it be successful, you know what I mean? To be able to get some printing done. And I'll, I'll wind up tinkering with it. I have no doubt about that. I just didn't necessarily want to struggle to get that first print. I wanted to at least be able to get through a few of them. Now, it turns out this thing's pretty much amazing. Um, I have very rarely had any issues with it whatsoever, and usually when I've had any issues with it, it's because I was trying to push it a little too hard. Uh, but on the whole, it's been an absolute workhorse. And the best thing about it is, so far, now mind you, I'm only using PLA and I'm only a couple weeks in, but I haven't had to use any tape. I haven't had to use any glue. I haven't had to use any hairspray. I haven't had any of those uh, kinds of issues. And for the most part, the stuff I'm doing just works. It's pretty awesome. So what I thought I would do is for this one, I would take you through sort of the process, especially for those of you that don't have 3D printers or you have them in schools, but you haven't used them yet. Um, I've gotten a lot of questions from people. All right, so now you have a 3D printer. How do you get the stuff to print? And how do you make your own stuff to print? So I thought I would just kind of take people through a very specific uh, use case, uh, something that I went through uh, just recently. Um, so the, 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 the issue at hand was I have, uh, I, you know, I collect Star Wars figures, and I have them all in these baseball, bat, and ball trophy cases, uh, display cases up on uh, the wall in the uh, living room. And uh, normally you would put a bat in there and you put a ball in there and you just leave it there. No big deal, right? Um, but with Star Wars figures, there's a lot of times where I'm taking one out or I'm putting a new one in or I'm taking one out to get some photos of it or I'm rearranging the order because I just got a new figure. I'm tinkering with that stuff a lot. And what I found was uh, because of the way the hinge is, uh, there's no way to keep it propped open. And so I was constantly juggling where with one hand I'm holding it open with the other hand I'm moving the action figures around. And sometimes I'm holding a $2,000 action figure and... Uh, you know, I'm doing it one-handed and worried about knocking things over. And I realized I should just make something to prop it up. Now, before I had the 3D printer, you know, obviously I still had access to wood. And I, I'm quite a craftsman, to say the least. And so I built this very elaborate uh, piece of technology to uh, hold open that trophy case. A uh, custom design specifically for something that size. And it looked like this. <laughs> Basically a piece of plywood with a, a, a notch in it and a point on the end of it so that it could prop it open. And that 
worked just fine for about a year. Um, no real harm done with that. In fact, I had about three of those pieces of wood that were absolutely identical, and they all did the job uh, rather well, for lack of a better uh, term. I mean, it just it, it worked, and that's all I needed it to do. But then I started thinking, now that I had the printer handy, could I do something different? What should that block of wood look like? How should it function? Um, because, I mean, listen, let's face it, aesthetics matter. We care. We care about the aesthetics, right? We all do. So I thought, you know what? Um, you know, since it just needs to be relatively thin and, and long and we're in the Star Wars universe, I thought a lightsaber made sense. Now, just a standard lightsaber wouldn't work because it needs to be able to wedge in there. So it needed to have sort of those notches. And ideally, you wouldn't want the whole thing printed out in one color because lightsabers are one color on the hilt and then a different color on the blade. So it really needed to be... So I kind of has started a piece in my head the, the, this sort of this vision. So the way I wound up going about it was... Um, I started off, well, all right, so let me, let me just step back. Well, no, we'll come, we'll come back to it in just a second. I started off going to Thingiverse, and when I went to Thingiverse, I found things like this. This is a Star Wars pencil top lightsaber, which is about the right size of what I needed it to be, and I thought this might be a good starting place. And what I liked about it also was the fact that it had sort of that, uh, um, uh, what do you call it? It's not hexagonal, because uh, oh no, it is hexagonal. Duh, uh, hexagonal uh, uh, shape to it, um, so that I could I could take that hole and I could design a lightsaber with just specifically that would fit in there, and that would probably work. All I would need to do though is create sort of those notches uh, as needed, and then make a lightsaber instead of a pencil that would fit in that space. So I, I downloaded that and I loaded it into Tinkercad. I actually found three different lightsabers that I kind of liked. This is one. Uh, this is the Kylo Ren one. And so I created a triangle block and uh, flipped it. When you create a block, when you drag a block into Tinkercad, you can choose whether you want it to be something solid, which means basically that's going to get printed in plastic. Or you could say, I want it to be a hole. And a hole basically means it's, well, that that stuff is not going to be printed. Whatever that shape is, it's not going to be printed. So this basically created that V-shaped notch that I needed at the bottom of the lightsaber. Now on the other side, uh, one of the lightsabers had that right you know, that hole that I was going to use for the lightsabers, some of them were solid. And so this one was actually solid. So what I wound up doing was I filled it in. It actually had a hole. It just wasn't the right size. So I filled it in with a cylinder to make it solid first. And then I added in a, uh, a hexagonal hole uh, of the right sort of depth. And you can kind of see this is how long I made it. So I knew it was going to be 28.36 uh, approximately centimeters. Uh, not centimeters, millimeters and so on. And then centered the whole thing. And that was my build model to actually print out the, uh, the hilt. Then I needed the actual lightsaber itself, which basically just needs to be once again a long cylinder. But the top should kind of be rounded. I needed the hexagonal piece so it fit into the lightsaber as well. And I also needed to add the notch at the top so it would hold open the trophy case uh, on top of it all, right? So, um, yes, Janita, aesthetics do matter, including pencils and pen All right, blah, blah, blah. So this is what I wound up designing in uh, Tinkercad. Now, this should actually all be grouped together, so I'm going to split it up. So this was the body of the lightsaber, right? And then I took the hole that I used over here, this one right here, this exact piece. And all I did was I copied that using the copy feature over there in the corner. And I pasted it into this model and I uh, uh, moved it and centered it right over there. So that way I knew the piece that was going to go into the hole was the exact same size. I did wind up actually shrinking it down just a tiny little bit. So it wasn't uh, too tight a feel, um, but you know, it works. And then on the other side, I added one of these, one of these half sphere shapes. Um, you know, resize it so it was the exact same size as the rest of the lightsaber blade. And then I added uh, the notch, the same sort of uh, notch that I had on the lightsaber. Now, one thing which I didn't realize at the time, which was kind of important, was I had to actually line up this notch with this edge and then line up this notch with the same edge 
over there uh, in the hexagon. So that when I put the blade in, the, the, the two notches lined up correctly so they weren't like kind of off kilter because otherwise it wouldn't hold it open. So that took a little, a little bit of time. And then once I, I was done, then we just exported this model as a .stl. Now, to be honest, I don't know what the difference is between an STL or a .obj. I, I'm really, I honestly, I have no clue. So I've just been doing .stl. I'll worry about that another day. So this piece, I can honestly say, was the first piece that I created on my own. It's nothing fancy, but at the same time, it kind of helped me uh, hone my skills, my Tinkercad skills just a little bit. Um, and the same thing, I mean, while the main part of this model I got off of uh, uh, Thingiverse, um, you know, the customization part of it is, is, is all mine, and that's uh, kind of the key. And then I downloaded the whole thing and uh, saved it over to uh, my desktop and then brought it into what's called, uh, I, I initially I was using a, an app called Slicer, uh, now I'm using something called Cura. So just to step back and just reiterate, I started off with a model that I found on Thingiverse, downloaded that. Then I uploaded it into Tinkercad and tweaked it as needed. So the actual final model that I'm going to be printing, I made in Tinkercad and then exported that to my desktop. So now I have that beautiful, perfect model. Now I need to create the file that the 3D printer is going to use to, uh, to do the actual print. Now remember, the 3D printer when it's going to be printing, um, the way that it does it is, it does it line by line. It goes from the bottom, at the build plate, all the way up to the top, and it does one layer, and then the next layer, and then the next layer, and the next layer, and the next layer. So what I needed was somebody, you know, an app to take that model that I just created and to slice it up, to chop it all up into each of those different layers so the 3D printer knows how to handle it. What it also does is, because while you could print these kinds of things in solid, 100% thick, you know, plastic, um, they'd be kind of a waste. I don't need this. This isn't going to be something industrial or anything like that. It's just using to prop up a, a trophy case. So um, what will do? The, what this other app does, the slicer app, will actually uh, you know fill it in. Um, instead of making it solid, it will say, hey, this part, it's 100% on the inside. Make it honeycombed or make it, uh, you know, uh, um, you know uh, a little bit more hollow so that way he can save on, on some plastic. So the app that I use for that is called Cura. Now, this is the uh, blade. Uh, all I did was uh, drag it from my desktop into here or, you know, use the import feature. Uh, that is it. And uh, then I, uh, you know, bring it into here. And uh, um, what happens is you just kind of go through here and say what kind of settings you want. Now, there's a whole bunch of default settings. You can choose uh, how wide the uh, the, how much plastic it's going to use on each layer when it's extruding it out. The less plastic it uses on each time it passes through, the higher the quality is. If you use a lot of plastic, it's going to go a lot faster, but it's not going to be as high quality uh, and so on. And then all of these other, I'm not going to get into all the different settings right now, but what I will say, what I like about uh, Cura more than anything is when you hover over a setting, it pops up and gives you a description of what exactly that setting is. And if you change it, what that's going to impact. And then down here in the corner, it'll tell you how much plastic you're going to use and how much time it's going to take and so on. And then you can just click print. And you can also see right here, I'm going to go into uh, layers. Um, you can also kind of zoom out and you can actually see all the different layers. So that's at any given point what that layer is going to look like and so on, which is just kind of a neat little view so you can see what it is you're actually printing and what it's going to wind up looking like. And then the net result is, uh, you know, uh, once it's all done, hopefully you've got something that you're, you're, you're a fan of. So I wound up going through a whole lot of different models. You know, this is uh, one of them and you can see it's got the notches there and it's got, uh, you know, the hole on the inside. Hopefully you can see that. I realized I really wanted this to be a little bit more to scale. So I made another one that was a little bit larger and then get everything to fit. And the end result, I'm actually pretty happy with. I mean, you can see what it looks like in action when it's this was all in gray before I had the red stuff, uh, the red uh, uh, plastic 
uh, come in. Uh, but that's what it looks like. And to be honest, it's a, it's a little thing, but I like that a whole lot better. Uh, so I'm pretty pleased with it. And uh, you can see this is what it looks like when it's in color. Now, ideally, I'd like the hilt here to be black, and I'd like to be able to get some different saber blade colors. But you can see it's got the notch there at one end, and that lines up with the notch there at this end. Um, and then I've got a few others that I've been working on. This is Anakin's lightsaber, and ideally this one should have a blue blade. This is a, uh, you know, a Luke lightsaber. This one should have a green blade and so on and so forth. But, uh, you know, the beautiful thing is this is something that I made myself and it serves a very specific function it's not necessarily life changing per se but i think what it does is it demonstrates sort of this process that you will wind up going through now when my wife says you know we need a, a towel hanger in the uh in the bathroom i don't just go online and buy the first white black or gray towel hanger that i see now i'm stepping back and thinking well, what do we want it to look like Let's think about our bathroom. In our bathroom, we've got decoration from pharmaceutical companies, and we've got weights and measures and a mortar and pestle. What would blend well in our bathroom? What would we be proud to display? What should it look like? And then if the design doesn't already exist, how, how can I make it? You know what I mean? And we're kind of going through that all all over the place now. We're starting to kind of really step back and think about, you know, uh, you know, I always lay my iPhone down. I don't have an iPhone dock. I never spent the money on it. It was just plugged into the actual cable. But now I can actually print out an iPhone dock. And if I'm going to print one, where am I going to put it? And based on where I'm going to put it, do I want it to be laying down? Do I want it to be sitting up? Do I want it to have the speaker thing? Do I not want it to? Do I want it to be horizontal or vertical and so on? And I'm actually just making all of these decisions and trying to uh, uh, figure it all out. So um, that, that's kind of it in a nutshell. So just to reiterate that entire process, you know, because um, I, I, honestly, the whole thing was kind of fuzzy to me before I actually really kind of dove in. I started off on Tinkercad and I found a starter model, a starter model there. Then, uh, I'm sorry, in Thingiverse. Then I brought the Thingiverse model into Tinkercad. I tweaked it from Tinkercad until I was happy with it exported it from Tinkercad and brought it into Cura. And then once it's in Cura, you can either, if your 3D printer is plugged into your computer, you can just hit print. If it's not plugged into it, then you save it uh, instead to a USB, uh, I'm sorry, not USB, to a uh, an SD card. Save it to the SD card, plug that into the printer, and then just uh, tell it to uh, go ahead and print and wait as long as you need to wait and then enjoy. So it's uh, it seems like a lot of steps, but when you break it all down, it's not uh, there's not that much there, and uh, it's honestly, it's a lot of fun, and it really does kind of change your perspective. It's not just about printing cool, like, Yoda things to put on your desk. It's looking, not necessarily for problems that need to be solved, but it's problems that you didn't even consider as problems places that you things that you could improve just because now you have the capability to do so you know what i mean it's interesting it's definitely uh mind changing so that is it uh i'm just going to point one last thing out for you and that is uh the printer itself that i got I'm really, really happy with it so far. Uh, it is called the Prusa i3 MK2S. Um, right out of the box, it has done a phenomenal job. I've been extremely happy with it. And uh, I will say, uh, the, the, you know, there's a, it, there's a little bit of a back order. Uh, it, it's not the cheapest one on the market. It's certainly not the most expensive one. But uh, I've been pretty blown away. Now, mind you, I don't have a lot to compare it to. But some other friends of mine, like Kerry Hutner and so on, who have seen quite a few of them, they seem pretty stoked by it uh, as well. So I can certainly uh, recommend that one. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that is it for me. I'm going to go ahead and uh, jump off. This was just kind of a, this little quick little overview of where I'm at with 3D printing. I'm sure we will do more to come, but uh, I'm excited to be back in the studio and broadcasting again and uh, hope you enjoyed. If you have any questions or follow-up topics or anything else along those lines, go ahead and throw it either into the questions on the Facebook or this will be posted on the blog, teach42.com. Uh, you can always post comments there as well. So until the next one, adios, sayonara, afuera, shalom, and uh, goodbye.